Hello, and welcome back to Wall Street Vault. We are back with another industry titan as cancer immunotherapy pioneer, Geert Kirsten of Cellside Corporation joins us today to discuss the company's latest developments, lead product, Multikine, and what's to come in the months ahead. Mr. Kirsten, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me, and I hope you're having a nice summer. Yes, our pleasure. So let's just start with, um, can you please introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit more about Cellside Corporation for our viewers who may not be familiar with your work. Yes, we have a simple idea that's never been done before. So we all know people have died of cancer, right? And they generally get surgery, radiation, and chemo, and then hopefully they're cured, except they're not cured, it comes back. So right. no one likes these treatments, but we have to put up with them. So how do you make that situation better? We said you have to engage the immune system before surgery, radiation, chemo destroy the immune system. I, but crazy, no one had ever done it before. So we are the first in the world to have shown survival benefit, four years of survival benefit, in what's called a neoadjuvant treatment, uh, meaning that you put it before surgery, radiation, and chemo. Okay. Um, and you are kind of the only company that's doing it that way, correct? No, now, now there are a whole bunch of people following up on it because it's the okay. obvious way to go, right? Everybody agrees the immune system should be activated earlier on. A bunch of others have tried and they failed. It's not as simple as taking a drug and, well, usually you develop a drug for dying cancer patients and you hope that you have an extra month or two of life and then you sell it for $150,000, $200,000 and toxicity doesn't matter because people want to live. No. When they do that, it doesn't work. So far, we're the only one where that has shown survival benefit. Okay. Excellent. And then recently, you announced that CellSci had a productive pre-submission meeting with Canada's regula regulatory health Canada to determine the best regulatory path toward market approval. So tell us a little bit more about this exciting development and then the process of CellSci preparing an application for approval. Welcome. So, so the, the way it works is usually companies only have time for, to go after one regulator and then later another regulator because it's very time consuming. But we've done something that no one has ever done. So if I come to you with a completely novel idea, I shouldn't just send you a million pages to review. I need to meet with you first and familiarize you and talk to you, right? And uh, I guess it's a bit like dating. You have to get to know the person first, right? And so that's what it's so that's what we did with Canada and they liked our data. But what happened in our data is that the people who had surgery and radiation had four years of extra life in head and neck cancer, by the way, which is fifth biggest cancer from under your nose down to your clavicle. Um, but when you add it, chemo it doesn't work. So no one has ever seen anything like it, but the huge survival benefit for years is undeniable. So therefore, they said, okay, you should get a conditional approval, which means you get a, you're get you allowed to sell the drug, but you have to do some confirmatory studies afterwards. It's a bit like, you know, you didn't fully check everything on the checklist, but it's really good. So, you know, afterwards, make sure everything is checked off. Okay. And so you have plans to file by early next year, correct? Yes, because we have to finish the validation of the manufacturing facility, and that should be done by then. And then you can file, and then the process is about 260 days. So towards the end of next year, we may be able to come to market there. And if Health Canada does grant the NOCC, then it's possible that cell side could begin commercialization in 2024. So Yes, uh, that's the... Yeah. How excited are you for that potential pathway? Uh, look, it's, 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 it's only been over 30 years that we've worked on this, right? We have literally poured everything into it. Um, this could save hundreds of thousands of lives. This drug is not specific to head and neck cancer. It's cytokines, meaning it reacts against any tumor, basically. And we have some other data. It even killed HPV in HIV-infected women who can't kill the HPV, right? So it's also non-toxic. It's a new way of treating cancer. What you have to do is you have to get it to market in one country, and then it will spread to other countries. And from head and neck cancer, it will spread into other cancers because that's what doctors do. Doctors don't have drugs 
that really works. They have toxic stuff. It's horrible. So if there's something that's not toxic, that has a different mechanism of action, they will try it. We aim to be the ones that get that foothold and then over time, probably in the hands of a big company, it will be developed for breast cancer, melanoma, et cetera. And it was also reported that Europe is a priority market for CELSI. Uh, Europe has more than twice the number of head and neck cancer cases diagnosed each year compared to the US. Can you share what work is being done to seek conditional marketing authorization? You no, know, I just think of Europe. If you go to Europe, you go to a restaurant, you know, a little bar. They're smoking, they're drinking. Those are the main causes of of, of head and neck cancer, right? So that's why you have many, many more. Um, yes, we are. We have found unbelievably good consultants, people who uh, used to actually approve these cancer uh, drugs in Europe at the EMA and MHRA, and we are in the process of finalizing. The, the submissions for what's called a scientific advice. Remember how I said you need to talk with people first? They call it scientific advice over there. And uh, that, that is, they tell you then which way to go. Um, and to the opposite, it's, it's we're, we're basically, you know, we're at the end here and we need to figure out the exact path to get to market. Okay. And any idea of a timeline for that in Europe? You know, Canada was maybe towards the end of next year. What are you thinking for Europe? If well, you have, to, you, you, have, you have to see how they respond. You also, we're hearing that um, some of the regulators are way behind because they don't have enough people. Uh, we, uh, but then again, we, it, it's, not, it's not, like I said, you have to go and meet with people. I'm hoping that we will have answers here in the middle of fall. And I'm hoping to be able to bring this drug in many, to market in many markets at the same time uh, which, by the way, means that we have to find a large pharmaceutical partner because we're a small company and the, to sell it. And then if there is a follow-on study that needs to be done to confirm things, then you do that study. But again, it's, that's not no problem if you're selling the drug already. Right. Okay. Um, and then back here in the United States, Selfly had a positive meeting with the FDA about the need for better treatment for head and neck cancer. How could this lead to collaboration with the FDA to show multi-kind could meet this need? Well, what happened is 10 years ago, five years ago, FDA would give an accelerated approval very quickly on things like tumor response. And we have great tumor response data. We have people who have no tumor in three weeks. And anyone who has a tumor response, which is 30% reduction tumor size, um, ends up with 82% survival compared to 48% survival. So that's really good, right? Um, that's no longer possible that FDA used to give those and then product companies did their confirmatory studies. Companies cheated. The studies that should have taken two years suddenly took four or five years. FDA didn't like it. They changed the law in December of 22. So what you now have to do is before you can ask for accelerated approval, you must enroll the confirmatory study in the United States. And then use data. And then you have well, if that data is good, you go back to your FDA and you say, look, this is really good data for these patients. We would like to talk to you about an accelerated approval. Okay. So it's a, a little bit of a, a path and a journey to get that. It's always been a path and a journey. There's not a single cancer drug that hasn't had a path and a journey. For sure. And then finally, let's discuss the potentially quite impactful PDL1 biomarker data from cell size phase three study. Uh, this was presented at the American Head and Neck Cancer Society's 11th annual international conference on head and neck cancer. And the data demonstrated that the tumors of patients who responded best to multikine in the phase three study had low levels of the PDL1 biomarker. So can you tell us what those, what that uh, Let me explain data? that to you. So the yeah. most important class of cancer drugs these days is checkpoint inhibitor. The king of checkpoint inhibitors is Merck's drug called Keytruda, which by itself has sales of about $24 billion on an annual basis. So it's big. Yeah. Um, however, its mechanism of action is such that it only really works with people who have a lot of PDL1 receptors on their cancer cells. So if you don't, and the great majority of people don't, then it doesn't really work that well. 
That's why hundreds of immunotherapy studies are a combination of k with other medicines trying to make k more successful. So you know, if it only works in, if only 30% of people have a lot of pdl one then that's where it works well, but the other ones don't. It turns out from our phase three study, completely statistically significant, so beyond any you know, criticism, we have the survival benefit and the tumor responses in patients who have few PDL1 receptors. So if Keytruda works on the left side of the room and lights it up, but doesn't light up the right side, we write light up the right side. So if you want to light up the whole room, meaning you want to help all many more patients, you ought to be combining them. And in fact, there's already some interest there. We'll have to see which one it goes. So that's 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 the next step. The first step for us is to bring the drug to market as it is. Second step is to see combination with k or other checkpoint inhibitors to see if maybe we can save tongues. Maybe we can save people's larynxes. Right? That, those would be worthwhile goals. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Well, this has been extremely informative. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us? It's, look, it always takes a long time to bring cancer drugs to market. Um, in the end, it all boils down to data. And we have been able to select patients who, and this is not yet public, so I won't give you the details, but we have data that is much better than that is publicly known. So therefore, when you go to the regulators and you show that you have data that's just incredibly good with no safety, you ought to be able to come to the market. So that is the main driver, and that's what keeps us going, helping the patients. And the money comes from that. And can you let the audience know the best place they can go for additional information on your company? Sure, it's on our website. It's cell size, C-E-L, uh, horizontal hyphen, I guess, um, sci.com, C-E-L-S-C-I. Dot com is our website. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time, and we look forward to monitoring your company progress and speaking with you in the near future. Thank you. And by the way, in other ways, you can just put in our stock symbol CVM, CVM, and then also there will be linkages to the website. Okay. Awesome. Thank perfect. you so much, and yeah. have a wonderful day. All right. Bye. 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 Take care.